Hey YouTube, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Saturday, May 28th, 2011. It's almost 12.30 in the afternoon and uh, I'm back in the garage building the Mueller Motor Magnet Dynamo. And uh, yesterday I decided that I wanted the uh, inset for the bearings on the stator plates to be facing towards the center, towards the rotor on both sides. Um, I did make the mistake of having it flipped the other way so that the bearings assembled into, into the uh, plexiglass or the Lexan from the ends of the shaft and that was really a mistake because it made it very difficult to assemble, assemble the rotor. So I had to take all of the ferrites out, clean the holes out, glue the ferrites back in, flip the position of the, of the stator plates and get them going the other way. So uh, last night the glue set up, everything's all set for today. The, uh, the bearing races <clears throat> are now permanently fixed to the rotor shaft so that I can just take and assemble the stator halves to both sides and there's no possible way that it can uh, get too close to the, to the ferrites where it will clamp down to the ferrites. That's a good thing. Um, what else? A little bit later I'm going to be cutting out some round Lexan donuts and drilling them out to 5 16 and I'll be building up the thickness of the center of the rotor hub so that the length of the hole that goes through that the threaded rod passes through is an inch and one eighth. That way uh, the, the hole will be much longer and it will hold the, the, uh, the disc for the rotor much more perpendicular to the threaded rod than it does right now with just two nuts threaded up to it. There's still a little bit of wobble in here. Increasing the thickness of the rotor disc should, el should uh, eliminate the rest of that wobble out of, the, out of the rotor and make it much more rigid. Next phase is to wind the coils. And I have put together a coil winding jig out of a piece of aluminum bar that we use for cable management when we're assembling the uh, radio systems for public safety. Uh, these just go up the rack and we, we manage our cables vertically uh, alongside, alongside these rails that, that extend backward. Uh, but right now <coughs> I'm, I've uh, repurposed it and made what looks like a fishing reel according to Mr. Langwell. <laughs> And uh, he says, if, I, if it doesn't work as a coil winder, I can go out and use it for fishing. And that's probably true. But uh, be that as it may, I've got, uh, I've got the bobbin assembled to a quarter inch stainless steel threaded rod. There is a, uh, a backing washer on one side with a, uh, a piece of, of uh, adhesive backed rubber to hold the bobbin in place. I just assemble the bobbins from, from the front side with the wing nut. <laughs> There are a couple of washers against the aluminum and a split lock washer that are locked into place to create friction so that when I, when I crank the handle, it won't, and if I let go, it won't unwind by itself. The same is true for the two pound spool of the wire that I've assembled. Uh, I've got a 3 8 inch bolt going through the center, a couple, couple of uh, concave suspension washers to hold it centered on the bolt, and it's also a friction, uh, friction fit through the hole of the aluminum bar. To wind the coils, I'm just going to take, take the uh, entire coil winder, stick it in the vise to hold it steady. Like so. And then wind my coils, which should work out extremely well. So, pretty happy with the progress. I'm broadcasting live on Justin TV. Hope you have time to join us this afternoon and uh, wish everyone well. Peace.